where he belongs right us in our lives that we put him first and we say god you are almighty you are all powerful jesus before i ask you for anything i need to know that you that you can that he can do it right we need to know in our hearts and believe that he can do anything in our lives so before that this morning come on would you just lift him up with me sing it again your kingdom reigns our father who is in heaven hallowed be your name in this morning jesus your kingdom reigns hallowed be your name come on reigns forever reigns in all the earth and in my life earth, your kingdom reigns sing it out your kingdom reigns you are all powerful jesus you are almighty god in all the earth and in my life Don't be afraid to open your mouth in this morning and praise the living God that has done miracles in your life. Am I the only one here? Am I the only one that God has done amazing things in? No, come on, get excited for God in this morning. Hallelujah. get excited for the Lord in this morning with me could you get excited with for me with me in this morning are we here <laughs> hallelujah God you are worthy to be praised Jesus
yesterday's glory has passed and I want what you have for me today. say that pour your spirit in my life lord god in those areas jesus where i may be slacking lord god in those areas where i may be doubtful jesus in those areas oh god where i may be fearful lord in those areas where i am lacking faith jesus will you pour in this morning Lord Jesus all our lives Lord God forever and ever our lips Lord God our tongue will sing praises to your name oh Jesus you are the most high you are our strong tower you are all we need oh Jesus
need it. 
it. We just speak a fresh word into us this morning. We need it, God, so that we could hear your wind blowing, so we could prophesy, so we could sing, so we could declare, so we could live a life of victory in you, God. And we believe that it is able only to be done by the power of your spirit. How many of you believe this this morning? It is only by the power and the peace of the Spirit of God that we're able to live it out. And so we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we are ready. Pour it out. Pour it out on us. In the name of Jesus and all God's people say, amen and amen. God bless you, church. Thank you. God bless you, church. Welcome, all of you, each and every one of you. God bless you this morning. Um, you know, I know that God has been moving in our midst, and, and um, there's a lot to say, a lot to be thankful for. Those of you that are online, I'm so glad that you are with us watching. We've been having some, some difficulties online with just staying um, connected on social media, on Facebook, but um, I'm glad that you're able to pull through and, and rejoin us. Um, you know, and I pray that you would join us in person because there's nothing, truly nothing more beautiful than worshiping with other believers together in person. For those of you that are here today, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Yes, there's nothing like worshiping God together. We have so much to be thankful for as a church. God has been moving in mighty ways. There are new people. Let me see by a show of hands if you are uh, a new guest or a new person that's been with us for the last month or so, four, four to five weeks, would you raise your hands up? And would we as a church, would we recognize there's a family over here? That's right. We're so glad that you are with us. We hope you make this church your home. We have a membership class where um, there's a, um, a, a small group, but it's a wonderful group. I, I got to speak a little bit more with our, our couple of sisters in our church. I don't want to call them out by name. I don't want to make them embarrassed because, but they're going to come up here one of these days, right? When they come and be received as members. But we're glad because we're celebrating all these wonderful things in the church, new friendships. Is, have anybody made a new friend here in the church? Raise your hand if you made some new friendships. That's right. Some wonderful friendships. And guess what? Next week we get to celebrate Mother's, Mother's Day at Grace Point. We celebrate the moms, the grandmoms, the stepmoms, the aunts the special women in our lives. They are the workmanship of God. We are God, all God's workmanship, and don't, but we don't want you to miss out next week um, here at church. Come to church and then go out and celebrate uh, with your family on Mother's Day. Um, I do want to give you just a, a quick, maybe a few second update on our capital campaign. For those of you that maybe don't know about it, we have been saving up as a church in order to purchase our own place, whether it's a building or a piece of land to build on. Um, we continue to save and we continue to pledge. Um, and all of, the, all of the proceeds that you are giving are going towards that. So it's all being set apart. Um, please know that and please trust that we have a, a wonderful team in place that's working towards that goal. We don't have a place yet. We don't have a piece of land identified. It's been, if you think the residential um, uh, community or, or home is hard, guess what? Commercial is even more difficult and more challenging. Challenging. But we believe God's going to open the right door, right? We believe he's going to open it in his time. We trust him, right? We know that God is working in all things for the good of those who love him. And he loves his church more than we love him. We love the church. He loves his church and we will trust him. Whether it's in 2022, um, that would be great. But if it's not, if it's in 2023, we will trust his, his work and his leading. Um, and so I just wanted to give you an update on all that. With all that God has been doing and the way he continues to move and impact our lives, there is always a battle. There's always a relentless battle that we have with our spirit and our mind and our hearts, with our mental states, our emotions, and the way we let God work in all of us, in our thought life, and the circumstances that we face every day. You will leave this church today, and I will guarantee you that you will face tribulations and trials this week. How will you handle all of that? And so we're starting this new series called Winning the War in Your Mind. It's, some of you had asked and written some, a suggestion that you wanted to do a message series based on a book. Well, here's your answer. 
This is a book written by Pastor Craig Rochelle. He's the, um, um, the author of this book. He's also the pastor of Life Church. You know, the, anybody have the Bible app on their phone? You have the Bible app on your phone. So his church is just responsible for that wonderful little app where millions, at this point probably billions of people, um, are being reached through the power of the gospel on right on your phone. So um, he's a blessing. Um, we do have some copies out there if you'd like to purchase the book. We do have some copies later on. Um, I hope you get it. If you want to get it on your own, you're more than welcome. Read, read the book. Um, we're going to be focusing on this for the next month or so because God wants to speak to us. He always does. Um, always. And our minds are a territory that we want God to be the owner of. How many say amen? to that. And so we will be praying about this specifically in this coming prayer service that's coming up on Tuesday. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. We have prayer once a month here at Grace Point. It's the first Tuesday of every month. It's at 7.30. It's here in person. I know some of you like to join um, over Zoom. You're able to do that. But I do uh, just really encourage you to come and join us in person. Um, Pray with your brothers and sisters. This is one of God's um, one of God's orders or things to us that he speaks to us. We need to spend time together in prayer. And that's how we're going to win the war. Amen? So could we pray together right now? Would you bow your heads with me? Amen. Ooh, Father, we thank you that we are a part of your church here on earth, that where your spirit is moving, we are open to what you have to say to us today, God. God, we, we are glad that we are part of a church where we see people born to life Almost every week, Lord, where we are part of something where we're believing you for great and tremendous things, Lord. And would your son be lifted up in whatever we ha- else we have to say today, God? Would your spirit continue to draw us to know you more and desire you more? God, would you bless the work of our hands, that there would be lives, that there would be families, that there would be literally generations transformed by the power of your word, Lord God. By the grace of your son, Jesus, God, bless this message. And we pray this and believe this in the name of Jesus and all God's people say, amen. Amen. So we're starting this new series um, today, uh, Winning the War in Your Mind. I want to read to you in a moment from God's Word, and I want to set up this series and tell you um, that over the next four weeks, four to five weeks, we're going to look at the mind of the Apostle Paul. Um, And toward the end of his life, the, the Apostle Paul mastered the way that he thought. He wasn't always there, right? If, if you read some of his early writings, um, Paul sometimes, he looks crazy. He, he sounds crazy, right? Which is encouraging to me because I can sound a little crazy sometimes, right? But he battled. He battled. He said one time, he said, the things I want to do, those things I don't do, and the things that I don't want to do, I don't do. Who can help me? Who can deliver me from this body of death? And he battled again and again in his mind. And he, but he battled and he fought and he won. He took ground. And over time, he mastered his thoughts. And even when all of life was stacked against him, from a Roman prison, he could now say that there with boldly, boldly, because he'd captured the thoughts in his mind, and he learned to win the war in his mind. And that's what we're going to talk about. Let me just set the tone by reading to you from God's word. These are the words from the Apostle Paul, and it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And he says this, he says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war. Somebody say wage war. He says we do not wage war as the world does. He says the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. For those of you that are followers of Jesus, for those of you that are believers in Christ, you have access to supernatural weapons from the kingdom of heaven. He says the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, he says, they have divine power. Somebody say divine power. We've learned this word, Greek word dunamis, remember, and we, got, we get the word dynamite from it. Um, it's the explosive, miraculous power of God. The, he says the weapons that we fight with are not from this world. They have heavenly divine power to do what? To demolish strongholds. 
What's a stronghold? A stronghold is not a word we use commonly in our language, right? But it means a fortified prison. One commentary I was reading said that when you're in a stronghold, you are a prisoner. You're in this fortified, strengthened up prison. And you're a prisoner that's locked by deception. You've believed lies that have put you in this prison. And what does our enemy do? Because we're constantly in a battle. Our enemy tries to shape, to influence our thinking one lie at a time so that we're in this prison believing something that is actually not true. It's a stronghold. And the word of God says, on the contrary, we have divine power, we have weapons that have divine power to demolish, to obliterate, to bring down these strongholds in our life. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. What does our enemy often tell you? He tells you, oh, you can't trust people. You can't let them know who you really are. If they really knew you, they wouldn't like you. God doesn't really love you. He says, God doesn't care about you. He says, God doesn't hear your prayers. You just prayed a lot so many times. He never answered one thing. He tells you, you're never going to get over this, this thing that's got, got you. You're never going to get better. You're never going to be better. You're always going to be stuck. Your life is always going to be bad. He tells you, you always hurt people. People can't trust you. You can't be trusted. You can't have real closeness with anyone, can you? Those are lies the enemy whispers to us. Sometimes he yells it to us, and we are stuck in this fortified prison of a stronghold. Whatever the lie is, the enemy lies and lies. And Paul says, Paul says in this word, he says, we demolish these strongholds. We crush them. We vanquish. We destroy them. We demolish arguments. And the rest of the verse says, and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. That's the next part of the verse. Anything that is not from God, we're going to crush it. We're going to demolish it. We're going to vanquish it. We're going we're gonna to obliterate it. We're going to crush everything that is not in line with God's truth. And so how do we do that? The word of God says in the next verse, please, verse 6, it says we take captive every single thought, every single thought, and we make it obedient to Christ. Hallelujah. Right now, some of you are waging war. You've been losing ground in your mind. You're, you've been suffering from anxiety. I can't tell you how many people I speak to on a weekly basis. There's been this stronghold, and today God says, you got to fight, you got to wage war. It's time. Not with your power, not with your knowledge or, or your wisdom or your cute little words or your job or career or your money. Hey, devil, I come to you with my $20,000 bank account. No. He says, with the divine power. With God's divine, explosive, miraculous, dynamite power that crushes and demolishes the strongholds in our lives. So over the next few weeks, we're going to learn to recognize these thoughts, these lies that are not from God. And we're going to capture these thoughts. We're going to take them captive and we're going to make them obedient to Christ. How many are with me today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Why does this matter? Why does all this matter? Why do we need to win this war? What is so important about this? You know, the life that you have is a reflection of your greatest thoughts. The life that you are living right now is a reflection of your deepest and greatest thoughts. What are they? What are those? If you want to change your life, you've got to change your thinking. Amen. Some of you don't believe me yet, you know, but you're basically what you, you basically are what you think. You think you're bad? Guess what? You probably are. If you're confused about who you are because you're living according to the lies someone told you, you who hates you, which, by the way, his name is the devil, he tells you your life will move, it, you're, this is the way you are, you're never going to change, guess what? You probably will never change. And you're stuck in this negative lie, negative pathway, negative direction in your life, and you're wondering why things don't ever change. 
So today, God's telling us, you need to win this war. We're going to wage war. It's not by your strength. It's not by how much you're sleeping at night. It's not by how much you have in your account. It's not by what degree you've accomplished in your life. It's not by how many children you have or how well you raised them. It is by the divine power of the Spirit of God. Crushes. Explosive, miraculous power. Look at somebody sitting around you and give them a high five and say, God's going to change my life. Listen, when you're excited about something, you say, God's going to change my life with his explosive power. That's right. You give him a high five. You smack that hand, right? <laughs> Who's ready for a little bit of God's word today? Amen. Yeah. You know, I, I only have a limited amount of time, so help me out, okay? <laughs> your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to let that sink in. Your life, your life, your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Your strongest thoughts, they're going to dictate the direction of where your life is going, even right now, as you sit and listen to this message. I love the Old Testament proverb that says, as a person thinks... As a person thinks in his heart, so is he, right? As you think, you will become. So if you think you can't, you probably won't. If you believe through Christ that you can do all things through him who gives you strength, then you, you probably will, amen? <laughs> if you are a victim and you believe you're a victim, always suffering at the hand of some outside circumstance that's going on, you will live as a victim probably most of your life. If you believe that you can overcome through the power of Christ, you will overcome through the power of Christ. Hallelujah. If you are always looking at the problems and dwelling on those problems, and the problems will overwhelm you. If instead you're looking for solutions, you're looking for the work and the hand of God over those problems, you will, God will help you find solutions, and you will see God working even in all of those situations with his explosive, miraculous power. Hallelujah. So what do we know about our thoughts? Almost all of us in every situation, most of us, we, the battles of life are won or lost in our minds. The mind is a battlefield. It's not, what is that? Is Pat Benatar or somebody saying, love is a battle? That's not true. Your mind is. <laughs> it's a battle between God's truth about you and Satan's lies to you. It's a battlefield. So today I want to encourage you. It's an introduction message to start thinking about what is it that you're thinking about? What is it? Maybe over these last few days, what is it that you, that are, is occupying your thoughts? What is it? We're going to do an audit of our thoughts this week. That is your homework. This week, I want you to just journal, maybe open up your notes app on your phone. What, have I, what am I thinking about? I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. Do an audit of your thoughts. What are you focused on in your minds? We're going to look at three different extremes to get you started figuring out what you've been thinking about. If you can scan this code that's going to come up on your screen, okay, you're going to scan this, co this code, and it's going to bring up three scales with extreme thoughts. I want you to just take a moment and consider this and rate yourself, okay? If you scan the code, you click the link, it'll come up with a little survey for you about your thoughts, so we'll start with worried thoughts versus peaceful thoughts. How many of you are worried about what people think about you? About your children you're worried about. You're worried about your marriage. You're worried about being single. You're worried about your future, about your money, about your job, about moving or not moving, about your health, about how long I'm going to preach today, whatever it is that you're worried about. <laughs> Maybe you're worried about different things, worried, um, you know, about different things in your life. So rate yourself. Are you more worried or are, do you have a peaceful mind where you rest well at night? Your mind is at peace. You are at rest there is not anxiety, even though that doesn't mean that everything is perfect or hunky-dory. There's circumstances that are challenging in your life, but you have the peace of God. Rate yourself from 1 to 10. 1 being worried, 10 being peaceful, okay? Let's take the next one. Let's contrast a positive mindset with a negative mindset. Which one are you? Are you generally negative and critical about people? Some of you should be shaking your head, yes. <laughs> Can you believe she wore that? Oh my gosh. Did she just say that? Who does she think she is? 
This is how I hear you, by the way, when you talk to me. This is in my mind. This is my, right? <laughs> I can't believe he walked in here acting like that, right? Do you find fault in people easily? Like they can't, they can say no right. Are you discontented with people, with life, with everything? Do you feel like life is always hard and it's going to get even worse? You just have a negative mindset. Or do you see positive in things? I believe the best about people. Life is generally good. And I believe in the goodness of God. And, and I believe that God is for me. And he's, he's with me. And he's working in my life. And he's working in all things to bring about good. Are you generally a negative person or a positive person? Last one. Let's talk about a contrast between worldliness and an eternal mind. Would you say you're thinking more about the things of the world? What benefits me? What am I going to get? What do I have? What do I need? What do I want? How am I going to get there? Who do I need to help me to get there? Worldly mindset. Or are you thinking about what benefits others, the church? How can I be a blessing to others? How can I help how can I use my life to bring glory to my heavenly king? <laughs> How can I pour out from the spirit of God that dwells in me? That's an eternal minded, my, that's an eternal minded person. So rate yourself from a scale of one to 10. Think about the things that you think about because your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. In other words, what comes into your mind comes out in your life. If, by the way, all you worry about is your children, then your children end up becoming your God. Yeah, I just said that. No matter what you do, no matter what you have, no matter what you know, no matter what you buy, no matter where you live, no matter where you travel, you cannot have a positive life and my or positive mindset when you are living a negative life your thoughts matter you will, life will always move in the direction of your strongest thoughts and so are you excited about where your thoughts are taking you are you are you excited or are there things in your life that you are realizing that maybe there is something going on there's a stronghold there's a deception. There's something that maybe you've been believing about yourself, about your spouse, about your children, about your church, about whatever that has been holding you back and you have not been able to win this war in your mind. Are you satisfied? Are you blessed? Are you excited by the directions that your thoughts are taking you? Or are you, are you realizing maybe I'm a, little, I'm a little in trouble here? For me, a couple years ago, my, my answer was plainly no. A couple years ago, 2019, not too long ago, right? My thought life was, you know, I would literally preach here on Sunday, and, and I would be okay for that Sunday. I would be faith-filled, and I would be positive. But the problem is Saturday, Friday, and Thursday, and Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I was in trouble in my mind. My thoughts were out of control. It was like I was in this battle. My thoughts would say, okay, last week's message was okay, but, you know, maybe I don't have what it takes. This message isn't going to be any good. Um, I'm exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. I, I don't know how long, how, can I, how long can I do this, God? Like, where, is, where are you taking the church? I, there's no results. There's, this is so difficult. Nobody knows what I go through. I was like, poor me. And my mind would race and race. So I decided to do something about it. And this has been one of the areas of prayer focus for me. Um, and God has helped me massively um, to improve. And so I still have a long way to go in letting God renew my mind, replacing the lies that the enemy was feeding with the truth of Christ. And I've read, I don't know how many different books. I've shared some of the ones that I've read with you. I've brought into my life a couple of tools that I use that I will share with you later on in this, in these message series. I've read, um, I've shared my vulnerability with my family, some close friends and so on. Um, and in the series, we're going to cover some of the things that I've 
I've learned to retrain my mind in order to focus on the truth of God so that I can, with the power and dynamite, explosive, miraculous, divine power of God, demolish the strongholds that have been hold, held up in my life for so many years because I want to win the war in my mind. Hey, how many say amen? Yeah. I cannot overstress how important this is. Your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. There is a battle. You may choose to, you know, deny it. You can sit in the middle of the battlefield with the mines all around you, and they're going to explode. They're going to hit you. They're going to probably destroy you at some point in your life. What, what are you going to do? Almost every battle, the marriage you have is the results of the thoughts that you think. Your financial stat standing is often a result of the mindset about the things related to money. The joy or lack of joy that you have is based on what you think your li life is like. What you focused on in your life. What you believe about yourself. I had a conversation this week about somebody who thinks so badly about themselves. Because the enemy, that's the, those are the lies he wants to feed us and he wants you to stay there. Because there he's got you grounded, he's got you powerless, he's got you defeated. But God wants you to win the war by demolishing these strongholds with his explosive, miraculous power. Hallelujah. Let's dive in today. Today we're at ground zero, okay? This is the foundation. I'm going to give you two very simple things quickly that we're going to work on. We're going to build on top of these in the coming weeks. The first thing is this, I identify the strongholds. That's the number one thing. Identify what's holding you back. What is the stronghold? It's the prison. It's that lie that's locking you in this deception. What's the lie that's keeping you prisoner? What is it? What's the stronghold? What is the enemy using to keep you from living the life that God wants you to live? Maybe it's your self-talk. I'm terrible. I'm so stupid. I'm, I'm, I'm dumb. Sometimes I talk, you guys talk to me and I'm like, why are you saying that about yourself? Stop. I'm never good enough. I stink. My past is bad. After all the things that I've done, God could never use me. I can't trust anybody. I can't be close to everybody I come close to, I ruin. You know what they did to me? I can't trust anybody at all. I'm never going to be in a job that I love. My life is always going to be crappy. I'm always going to be behind. I don't even deserve to be loved. All of my relationships, no matter how hard I try, they all fall apart. So just identify, what is it for you? What is the lie that has been holding you back? What is the stronghold? What is it? Why is that important? Whenever we have a thought, our brain is literally programming or designing itself around that thought. I don't know if you know that, but our brains, the way God created them, by the way, that's what I wanted to be is a, is a, neurosurgeon when back in the day. <laughs> they're reprogramming themselves. Their, their chemical makeup of the brain, it's changing. And certain thoughts influence other things. And every single thought creates a neurochemical change in our bodies. If you think a positive thought, your body rewards you with a little dopamine. It gives you a little buzz, a little quick hit, a thrill. You know that feeling? You hear some good news? Dopamine. Someone that likes, you know, likes you, your comment on Instagram and you feel a little good about yourself, you just got a little rush of dopamine, okay? This is a legal drug, by the way, all right? <laughs> Somebody says, ooh, you look really good. I like that outfit. You get a little shot of dopamine. It's that little chemical hit, a little high, that thrill, and your brain is saying, I like that thought. I could think that thought again. And the more you think a thought, the more you're creating what scientists call these pathways and in your brain. And your brain creates a pathway. It's kind of like, have you ever walked across a patch of grass? And if you walk across it enough, it'll create like a dirt path, right? And so, or the, the grass becomes matted. And it's like, that's what our, our brains are doing. Now it's used to going down this pathway. It's a pathway we've gone down several and many times. And the easier, the more thoughts you think about that, then it's going down that neural pathway. If you think negative thoughts, guess what? You created a patch in the grass that's now pretty much dead, and it's going down that negative neural pathway all the time. Somebody says something nice to you and you're like, I don't believe them. They're such a liar. Because you've already got this negative mindset. 
We're stuck in this lie. So if you, you're, if you tell yourself, I'm not good enough over and over again, you create a pathway where it's easier to think that you never will be good enough. Rather than believing that God is your source of strength, that God is the source of your goodness, and you are what God says, who God says you are, not what the world or who somebody told you one day. You created a negative pathway, and God wants you to win the war today. Hallelujah. In order to change your thinking, we have to change the path that our thoughts travel on. For example, if I'm, I'm, I'm not, I've got nothing but a negative path, I have to stop and say, wait, that thought is not helpful, it's not productive. In fact, that thought is not from God. Therefore, I'm going to capture that thought and I'm going to choose a different thought. I'm choosing to walk this way towards a different thought. And so I need to create a new pathway. And if you choose to stay off the, un, off the unhealthy pathway by recognizing these negative thoughts and eventually changing them over time, the grass is going to grow back in that negative pathway and you're not going to want to go down that path anymore because you like this path. It's the good path. It's the path that God wants you to walk in and you get a shot of dopamine to, to help you out too. <laughs> Isn't God awesome? You know, his ways are always good in every aspect. You create a new pathway with new God-honoring thoughts. And suddenly the truth of God, rather than that negative mindset, becomes the default, becomes the path that we're walking on, the path that our minds are focused on, instead of the lie that the enemy has been feeding us. Does that make sense to you? I tried to break it down a little bit scientifically, but if you're with me, say I'm with you. <laughs> So we're, we're creating God-honoring pathways in our brain. I'll give you an example. If you have a frustrating day at work, this used to happen to me, and you come home and there's chaos everywhere, you know it. The dishes aren't done. you got to cook dinner. You know, there's three kids that need to be fed, and they're all, you know, i got to bring me here, take me there, buy me this. You know, I, I, I have a rash over here, and the bills are piling up and the table, and you just, you just got home, and so you got, everything's frustrating, it's all a mess, and all you want to do is, I'm going to yell at everyone, and that's my reaction to the frustration. And every day when that happens, your, the pathway that you've chosen is when there is chaos, when there's the pathway, that, when there's terrible things, and life is hard, I yell. And what we have to do is we have to capture that thought and say that is not healthy, that is not honoring to God. And then with God's explosive, miraculous, divine power, we change our thinking. And it might be, and it might be well, I stop and I count to 10. In the case of many of you, it might be 500. So whatever you need, right? And you pray a prayer and you walk in to your house and you say, and no matter what, no matter how ugly he looks right now, I'm going to hug my spouse. I'm going to love on my kids even if they resist, right? because my kids don't want me to hug them. And so because that's the pathway that I'm choosing, I am choosing not to yell. God wants to redefine our pathways. By the way, my husband is not ugly. I'm just trying to be funny, okay? We're creating a new pathway. We're creating new pathways. Whatever your mind says, you know what it is. This happens and this is my reaction. I know one of our, our brothers here, Jose Lo, says we need to react less and respond more. Whatever your mind says, I don't feel good about myself, let's eat. There's a clear pathway between when I feel bad and the refrigerator. I don't feel good. Ice cream is a solution. Yum. What do you do? You need to capture that thought and say, no, you know, actually it's not. When I eat the ice cream, I feel really guilty and bad about myself. Instead, I'm not going to travel that path. I'm going to choose a new path. Instead, when I feel um, stressed, I'm going to go for a walk. I call, or I'm going to call my friend to go do something together, go exercise. I might eat a fruit or buy a salad. And then I feel better, and you go for that little walk, and you get that little shot of dopamine. And then you're rewarded for doing the right thing. This is God's way of addressing the war that we have in our minds, and he wants to teach us to create new pathways because he wants us to wage war against the negative thoughts that come into and battle, we battle in our minds. The old pathway now begins to grow over. It's not the pathway that we want to travel. It's not easy. It's not as appealing. And you've created a new, God, more godly, healthier pathway. 
And your mind tells you, I'm going to blow it. I'm never good enough I'm at this. I screw everything I touch. I screw it up. Nothing goes my way. That is not a God-honoring thought or pathway. God is showing us. I'm, I don't, we don't need to think like that anymore. We're going to capture those thoughts. They're not healthy. They are not productive. They are not lifting my spirit. I'm going to choose a different path. I believe my God is with me. I, be I believe my God is for me. I believe that he is blessing me. I believe that his spirit dwells within me. I know he's in control. He hears my prayer. I believe that he's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. And I'm creating a new pathway that is leading to de demolishing the strongholds in my life and experiencing the explosive, miraculous power of Christ's working in me. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah. You know, somebody might ask, well, how is this in the word of God, Riza? I know that some of you are thinking that. Let me tell you where it's right here, Romans 12, 2. Some of you quote this all the time. It says, do not conform to the pattern of the world. It means don't conform to the ways, normal ways, seemingly, of the world. Don't think like the world thinks. Don't live like the world lives. It says, but instead be renewed, tr be transformed by the renewing of your what? Of your mind. How are we transformed? By renewing our minds. Science would call it rewiring or re and God calls it renewing your mind. Hallelujah. Identify the number one stronghold that's holding you back. Call it what it is. Whatever it is, name it. You cannot defeat it, defeat it unless you define it. Give it a name. This is a lie that the enemy's been feeding you. You're not, you can't learn. You're never going to pass that test. You're, you're never going to succeed. You're always imprisoned by that lie. Your, your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. The second thing you're going to do, we're going to attack it by naming the truth of God that demolishes that stronghold. Hallelujah. What is the truth? We're not going to travel the old, unhealthy, unhelpful path. Instead, we're going to say and admit what the lie is. And here is the truth of God, the path that I will follow and that I will think instead. Some of you are locked in a prison and the only lock on the door is the lie that you've been believing. In fact, the door is open and you, but you, because you believe that the door is closed, you haven't walked through it because the enemy has told you this lie and you have not been able to move forward. And you, but the door is open. Open the prison door today by the power of God and be set free by his explosive, miraculous power at work. Identify what the lie is. And identify the truth of God. Hallelujah. Let's look at our text again. We're in 2 Corinthians 10. The Apostle Paul struggled in his mind. But he pressed forward with the truth of God. And he won the war in his mind. And he said, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary... Listen, church, the weapons we fight with have heavenly, divine power, miraculous, explosive power of God to, to demolish the strongholds, demolish the lies of the evil one, to crush them. So what do we do? We demolish arguments and everything that self, sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And what do we do? How do we do that? We take captive. Somebody say, take captive. With every thought, and we make it obedient to Christ. Every thought. Like, that's a strong filter. <laughs> it's not filtering out some thoughts. It's every single thought. With God's power at work with me, we take captive. I love that word captive. I love it. It comes from a Greek, Greek word that literally means to arrest or to seize with a sword or a spear. For example, Lewin took me captive with his love. <laughs> he literally took a sword, you know what I mean? I'm just, sorry, I had to throw that in there. I love this word. You know why? Because the apostle wrote, Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 6. He wrote about the, the armor of God that we have to do battle with. And the armor of God, every piece of the armor except one was defensive. The helmet's defensive. The belt, uh, the breastplate of righteousness def is defensive. Uh, the, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, they're all defensive weapons. 
And then he comes, there's only one offensive weapon, that's the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the truth of Christ, who he is, what he says to us, who he declares himself to be. And I love this because the one offensive weapon, the Word of God, the sword that seizes is the one that helps us to take captive every single thought and make it obedient to Christ. Hallelujah. The truth of God, we declare it over our lives. It is from God. It is God who says it. It is God who believes it in us and declares it for us. And I'm not going to believe that negative lie, that liar in my life, the devil, who's been telling me that I can't, who's been saying that I won't. I believe that God is for me. And that's what he says. So I'm going to walk in it. (laughs) I love this. So we take captive any wrong thought. I'm not going to go down that path anymore. This doesn't lead to God's destination for me. No way. I'm going to choose something different. I want what God wants for me. The more I travel the truth of God, the word of God, uh, the more I'm going to believe it, the more he's going to renew my mind, a new mind, again and again, renew. So it's not a one-time deal. You don't come here on Sunday, May 1st. Is today the first? Yeah. You don't come here on Sunday, May 1st and say, my, my mind has been renewed. You come here Monday, May 1st, or Sunday, you come here May 8th, you come here May whatever. You come here and you renew your mind and you get in groups and you pray and you continue to renew your mind with the truth of God so that you can walk in the direction that God has called you to in your destiny walk in your purpose wage war demolish the strongholds not with your strength oh oh your strength will dwindle later on my strength will dwindle later on because I'm going to be tired from preaching (laughs) if I depended on my own strength I'd be we'd be done as a church it's only the divine power dunamis of Christ How are you going to wage war? His divine power gives us the ability to choose God's path instead of the lie we've been consumed with. Many many of us for so long, your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. What comes into your mind? What is it? What's the number one thought that's held you hostage? Maybe it goes back to your childhood. Maybe it... You know, I remember thinking as a kid, I'm not good enough. I, if I try harder, maybe they'll love me more. I lived with that for many years. I didn't break that till probably I was about 32. Wow. And decades later, I saw it mature into other thoughts. And that was a lie of the enemy. But you know what? I believe God's truth about me. <laughs> and I believe that God has a truth for you today. You know what? On my own, we don't have what, on our own, we don't have what it takes. But the truth of God is real and is powerful to demolish the strongholds in our life. His spirit dwells within us. That's what we were singing earlier. His holy anointing. His spirit lives in us. And with him we have the power to wage war and to win the war in our minds. Only through the power of Christ's explosive, miraculous power. You know, I have everything that I need. That's the truth of God. It's found in 2 Peter 1.3. He says, God's divine power has given us everything that we need for a godly life. What do you need today? I'm going to personalize it. God's divine power has given me everything, me, everything I need for a godly life. I have everything I need, honey, through God's power. And the more I walk in this truth of God, the more God's path is going to become clear. I'm not going to be confused anymore. I'm not going to run away from, I'm going to try, I'm not going to try to escape from this lie because that's what many of us do. Hey, let me move to Tampa because in Tampa, the lie's not going to follow me. Guess what? In Tampa, the lie's probably going to be stronger because you ran away from the lie rather than being set free by the power of Christ. God's divine power has given us everything we need. I don't know what it would be for you. Maybe you say, I can't, I'm just frustrated, I I can't. You know, that's a lie. God says, "When when you're weak, then I'm strong. 
Maybe you say, I'm not attractive, I'm just not good. Nope, God says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Maybe you say, I'm just miserable, I, I'm always hurting. Nope, the truth of Christ is the joy of the Lord is your strength. Maybe you say, oh, I'm always going to be alone. Oh, oh, no, guess what? God says he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Do you see the truth of God working here? Uh, he's, you say, I'm a victim. I cannot overcome. This is just way too much. I'm always going to be bad. No, nope. God says you are an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony. He, the enemy says you can't. And God says, I am. I am with you. And you are who I say you are. God's truth. Your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. What comes into your mind comes out in your life. If you want a positive life, not just a positive life, like, you know, like move in the direction of the destiny that God has for you. Some of you, you know this. You've been declared this. Somebody prayed over you. You know it. But you're, the, the, where you're walking right now is not it. God wants to set you free today. We got to wage war, not with our own strength, but with the divine power of Christ, his explosive, miraculous power. Would you stand with me to your feet, church? If you know that you, your thoughts have been racing maybe for the last few days, maybe for the last few months, I don't know, you are overwhelmed with fear, anxiety, you name it, negative thinking, whatever it is, and you want the new pathway of God's divine power to create a new thought process for you, you say, you need God, help me, help me, God, help me bring my thoughts under the, the truth of your word. I want your divine power at work in my mind and and if that is you today, would you just raise up, stick up those hands to the heavens today. God wants to work in our hearts right now. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Whew. Thank you, Lord, for helping me to deliver this message today. Father, we, we pray today that your people would be set free. I pray from everyone, from the worship team to the hosts, to the children that are in the children's ministry, God, we would be set free today by the power of your spirit. Lord, many of us have been battling, and we've been battling with the wrong tools. You tell us the tools that we have are, are tools that are heavenly and divine and, and purposeful, God. We've been battling with the wrong tools. We take up the tools of heaven this morning, God which is by the power of your spirit to demolish the lies that the enemy has been feeding us. We believe what you say. Your word is the truth over my life. Your word is the truth over our lives, God, and we will trust in you. We repent, God, for the moments that we have tried other things, that we have believed the lies of the enemy. We repent, God. We repent, Lord, for the, the moments that we've put other things before you and the thoughts in our minds have gone in the wrong direction. And God, by the power of your word, help us today to capture those lies and replace them with the truth that is in your word, God. I pray that again and again and again this week, the moment that the lie starts to surface in our minds, that we would recognize it, that we would call it out, that it's not for from you, Lord, and that that's the wrong pathway, and that you would, God, redefine our new pathway by the power of your word, Jesus, that we would choose a different path starting today. Starting today, say, I start today. Say, I start today. I'm choosing to walk in your truth, God. Say, I'm choosing to walk in your truth, God. The truth of God, help us remind us over and over again, Lord, of your truth. Ooh, we wage war, Lord God. We wage war. We're going to demolish strongholds, not by our own strength, but by your power. In our marriages, in our families, in our, in our situations, in our circumstances, in our decisions. Father God, you're going to bring about reconciliation. You're going to bring about forgiveness, God. We're going to demolish strongholds by the truth of your word. I believe this, God, is a transformational word for your church. We are going to be believing you as a church and trusting you, Lord. 
for a time such as this, you have called us. And in Jesus' name, we will believe and trust you. How many say amen today? Amen. Amen. Let's worship God as we close out the service today with this uh, worship song. I know we're a little bit uh, late today. Just please excuse us and just let's continue to be close to the Lord as he draws us into his presence. He's speaking to us and and we just got to listen. God bless you, church. I want to be close, close to your side. So heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one. Hallelujah. Holy, holy God Almighty, the great I am who is worthy. None beside me, God Almighty, the great I am, the great I am. I want to be near, sing it out, near to your heart, loving the world. Wanna see dry bones living again, singing as one. Sing it out. Hallelujah. Holy, holy God Almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, none beside me. God Almighty. The great I am, hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God Almighty, the great I am. The great I am. The mountains shake before the demons run and flee at the mention of your name, King of Majesty. There is no great I am. Do you believe that? Do you accept that in your life? He is a great I am and he is the one who we will believe. He is the one who we are going to allow to infiltrate our minds and guide us. The great I am. We thank you Lord so much for this word. Thank you Jesus because this word is timely. Thank you Lord because you know that as a church as a society, as a culture right now, we need to hear this. We need to hear, Lord, that you are in control of our minds and that we are too. 
and that we have a say too in what happens in our lives and that is because we choose to believe you and we choose to believe what you said and we thank you Lord for this word I pray Lord Jesus that we take it into our hearts and really give us some thought and we allow you Jesus to do what you want to do in our lives I pray for that over my life and for everybody here in your beautiful name I pray amen God bless you church you may have a seat you know this week I want to we want to give you a challenge we want you to pick your strongest negative thought your strongest negative thought right and we want you to find an even stronger truth from God to combat that and let's do let's do that every single day this week that's your challenge to think about that you know because May I, we, did, we don't know if you know this, but May is Mental Health Month. And so to honor that, we will be speaking about mental health, where we are comfortable as a church to bring these topics up and to talk about it, because we know how important it is in our community and in the church body. And so every week you'll have a challenge, and that is your challenge this week. Remember, pick your strongest negative thought and find an even, an even stronger truth to come back that. I guarantee you that if you read the Bible, you'll find a lot. You'll find plenty. Okay, so that's your challenge today. So again, welcome if this is your first time here. Welcome to Grace Point Church. We love the Lord. This is a place where we are radical about everything, how we worship, how we praise the Lord because of what he's done in our lives. So welcome, and please text the keyword welcome to 978-355-7580 if this is your first time here. We also want you to text the keyword pray. You know, throughout this month as we speak about mental health, if you need prayer, for that, text the word pray to that same number, 978-355-7580, and we will be praying for you. I only have three quick announcements for you guys today. The first one is, like we always say, we thank you so much for your faithful giving that you continue to donate to, um, to your church. Everything we do, we are only able to do it through you. And God wants to use you and, wa and wants to use all of us to expand his kingdom. And this is one of the ways that we do it. So thank you for donating. We invite you guys to donate today securely through our texting system. You can text the keyword GIVE to that same number, 978-355-7580. Um, text the word GIVE to that number. Or you can securely donate through our website, mygracepointchurch.org. Um, forward slash give. The two announcements that I have for you guys is that next, um, and Pastor touched up on that already, next Sunday is what? That was a sad. Yo, next week is what? Yes, it's Mother's Day, my favorite day of the year. <laughs> This is when we women are being celebrated, and we know that as mothers, as aunts, as, you know, anybody that represents a mother figure, you know, we should be celebrated every day, on my opinion. But we'll take a day, all right? We'll take a day of the year, and this is a very, very special day, and we want all of you guys to come invite somebody that you love who's a mother figure in your life and bring them to church um, next Sunday. Again, it's Mother's Day. We want to celebrate with you and your loved ones, so make sure you, um, that you make it. And then the last announcement is that um, this upcoming Tuesday is prayer night. We can't, I mean, this, we can't say this enough. We can't go anywhere without prayer. We can't do 